Hello, welcome, my name is SlugMTG, and today I'm going to be showing off my hyper budget build for Rat Tribal. Now when I say Rat Tribal, I am not talking about something like this. No. 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 The reason is that I want to win. And this is not a deck that wins. It might win every once in a while, you might have a fun game, I'm sure it's a nice cute little deck, but I want to win more than just one out of every 10 games and just hoping my opponent gets mana screwed so my things can actually stick. Relentless Rats and Rat Colony are cards that are begging to be built around, but my biggest problem with them is that they're easy to remove, or once you start removing them they just get weaker and weaker and Rat Colony especially, running on that one toughness is just not worth it with the amount of removal that is going around Popper. But if you look at a lot of rats, you'll see that there is another theme going on with quite a few of them. And building around that theme, I have my list, which I'm calling Black Plague. So as you see, you see there is no Rat Colonies, no Relentless Rats. Because Rat Colony with the one toughness, it's way too easy to remove. Relentless Rats, it doesn't work with any other rats. Only Relentless Rats. And so it's, I'm not dedicating half my deck to a card that doesn't synergize with anything else. So as we move on to Magic Online, I'll talk about each of the cards more in depth. So here, you can see that I am running 21 basic swamps as my mana base. The first rat that I'm going to show you is our one drop, Typhoid Rats a black mana for a 1-1 death touch. It's pretty good, it can stop people from swinging in, we can swing into people, and they're not going to want to block, which will come in handy later on, but it's just a nice, reliable one drop. In the next section, we can start our main sub theme, which is discarding and hand disruption. So with ravenous rats and burglar rats, they are going to be the same thing, where it's one and a black for a 1-1, when they enter the battlefield, an opponent discards a card. And then our other hand disruption is, of course chittering rats you've seen these guys before if you've played you've seen chittering rats it's a very popular card one black black when it enters the battlefield the opponent selects a card from their hand and puts it on top of their library basically nullifying their next draw step and with a combination of these 12 cards here we can actually do a lot of damage and the reason why I think this works so well, especially in Popper, is that Popper is very much a value-based format, and you really want cards that play well off of each other because there's not really a lot of standout, just super strong cards, so you have to work off of synergies. And if you can eliminate those cards that are gonna work super well off of each other from their hand and kind of just reduce them to top decking, it's going to do a lot of damage, and you can definitely snowball that out of control. And we also have this other little sub theme of ninjas rats are ninjas who knew we are running two different ninjas we are running three copies of skull snatcher one in a black for a rat ninja two one and the cool thing with ninjas is they all have ninjutsu if you don't know what ninjutsu is uh, whatever the ninjutsu cost is for the creature for skull snatchers the ninjutsu cost is a single black mana we can return an unblocked attacker you control to hand put this card onto the battlefield from your hand tapped and attacking so that's pretty cool and then they all do something when they deal damage to someone so whenever skull snatcher deals combat damage to a player exile up to two cards from that player's graveyard I put this in the deck for two reasons. One is we don't want to be accelerating strategies that revolve around the graveyard or things like prismatic strands that really just don't mind if they're in the graveyard, opponents can just pitch them. So if they pitch cards that they want in the graveyard, we can ninja to the skull snatcher and just kind of remove the cards we don't want the opponent getting back. Next we have Okiba Gang Shinobi. I am only running one copy of this because it is a little more expensive. For 3 black black it's a 3-2 rat ninja although we will never pay that cost or almost never pay that cost. We care about the ninjutsu so 3 in a black we can ninjutsu return that unblocked attacker and whenever Okiba Gang Shinobi deals combat damage to a player that player discards two cards. I'm only running one because I don't really want more of these. I'm trying to keep ninjas to a minimum that way I have more attackers and then the cool thing about Ravenous, Burglar, and Chittering is they work really well with these ninjas because if they swing in if they're not blocked we can then 
put in the ninja. These get returned to our hands, and then we can play them again to once again get that discard effect. So it really works well together, and it does a phenomenal job of making sure our opponent is running very low on resources. We are running some card draw. Very typical black card draw. We are running four sign in bloods. You've seen this card before. It's really good. It can draw us cards and then it can also kill our opponent if they're at a really low life. So very flexible. And then I'm also running two copies of Read the Bones. Very good later on in the game. And when you scry two, draw two, lose two. It can help dig a little bit further looking for the finishers or whatever we're trying to get. Moving on to our removal package, we have Tendrils of Corruption, Green of Black, deals X damage to target creature, and we gain X life where X is the number of swamps you control. I mean, we're mono black. We are running a lot of swamps, so this can deal upwards of 9 damage, which means we're gaining that 9 back, prolonging the game, clearing the board, making sure we have unblocked attackers, just whatever we're trying to do, Tendrils of Corruption is great, it's going to deal a lot of damage, swing our life total, very good card. We are running 3 Geth's Verdicts for Hexproof creatures, just to clear the board some more, more budget, instant speed, and we also ping them for 1 life, so that's not bad, I'll take it. Of course we're running Crypt Rats, we can't run a Rat Tribal deck without Crypt Rats, or at least a good Rat Tribal deck without Crypt Rats. It's one of the best field wipes in Popper, really good finisher, really good at clearing the board. It's just a very good card, one of the best cards in Popper. So our next section we have our finishers. I'm sorry, this isn't a rat, it's Gurmag Angler. I originally did not have this in the deck, but as I was playtesting, I found myself just not being able to close out games at all, and I'm sorry, but a bunch of 1-1s and 2-2s, they're not doing much, and I had to bring in Gurmag, and the deck's a lot better with Gurmag. Who would have thought? A one mana, 5-5, five, five, one of the best cards in Popper. The other finisher, though, is a little more exciting. We have Sinuous Vermin for one and a black. We have a 2-2 Rat Horror with Monstrosity 3, so for 3 black black, if this creature isn't monstrous, put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and it becomes monstrous. As long as Sinuous Vermin is monstrous, it has Menace, so that's pretty cool. For 7 mana overall, we get a 5-5 five five with Menace, really good at finishing games, and something that people definitely don't see coming. It's I like this card, it's really cool. Lab Rats is a very unique finisher. I've, I've never seen this card before I started making this deck, and I really like it. So for a single black mana, we have a sorcery. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. Not too exciting, but this has buyback four. So as, as we cast this card, we can pay an additional four generic, and if we do, instead of putting it into the graveyard when it resolves, it comes back to our hands. So as long as we have five lands, which is pretty easy, I mean, we're running 20, 21 of them. We're going to have them most of the time. As long as we have those five lands, we can consistently put out a 1-1 one, one Black Rat every turn. And as long as we're not super far behind, this will definitely speed up the clock as they struggle to find answers against our ever-increasing board state. That's the deck at a glance. We want to disrupt their hands, and then once their hand is nice and disrupted, we can answer their threats and then bring in some of our finishers to close out the game. Moving on to the sideboard here, we have four copies of Defile in case we need more creature removal. Works really well because we're mono black. We're, once again, we're going to have a lot of swamps. If we need more targeted discard, we can bring in Duress to really start denying them those resources because they're not discarding their best cards. Nausea is really good against goblins and elves or just any other kind of small creature strategies. We have one more copy of Skull Snatcher to, just in case we go up against a graveyard deck, we don't want to help accelerate their strategy. One more copy of Geth's Verdict for Bogles, because we really don't like that matchup with all our targeted removal. It can be a little rough, so another Geth's Verdict to ensure that we can get through it. Another Crypt Rats in case we need even more removal after that. And then I have two Nihil Spell Bombs, just in case, graveyard decks. It's a very good budget relic of Progenitus. It does exactly what we want it to do, and it can even draw us a card, so that's not bad either. And so now that you've seen the deck, let's hop into a couple games and see how it goes. So we are in our first game here, and we lost the flip. We have one land. No, I'm not keeping this. That's small. This is better. I'll keep this. I've got discard, Crypt Rats, card draw. I'll keep... I. I think it sucks, but I think I have to bottom the Gurmag here. I'm not casting that for a long time. Radiant Fountain, and let's see, we drew Guest Verdict, we'll Swamp, and Pastor Island, and they pass back. 
Well, let's go ahead, sign and blood ourselves. We draw another Gutsford. If they play anything, it's dead. That's it from us. Give me your Aqueduct. I don't know what they're playing. Let's make them discard. Where we're at, always yield. What what do they discard? A snuff out. Okay, okay. Snuff out's not gonna be very good against us. The blue black control most likely. Should be seeing some counter spells. Radiant Fountain again. And they pass back. Let's play another swamp. And I'm gonna swing in with Burglar. Try to ninjutsu skull snatcher. And ninjutsu. I bet they're reading the card. What do they have? Tragic Slip. Okay. That's fine. Not the end of the world. What else do they have? Tragic Lesson. They return Radiant Fountain. Second main, let's go ahead and play another Burglar Rat. Let's have them discard again. They discard Dismal Backwater. Must be drawing a lot of lands. Pass turn, that's all we can do. Okay. The blue black control. How are we going to get out of this one? Dismal Aqueduct. Returning the islands. Pass it back. They probably have more removal. Let's go ahead and read the bones. Do like chittering rats. I'll draw both of these. My, I don't think there's much else I want to do. I'll pass for now. If I play Sinuous Vermin, that's one of my finishers. They're just going to get rid of it. I'll pass for now. Radiant Fountain. They're gaining a lot of life, but they're not doing much else. We draw the seventh swamp. Let's try to put down chittering. Let's see if that gets countered. Gets countered. And I'm still not comfortable putting down Sinuous. Let's pass turn. If they put anything down, we have Get's Verdict. Island. And they pass it back. They're not doing anything. Pass it back to them. They think twice on our end step. They flash back. It's finally their turn. Drop another island. Pristine Talisman. They're gaining a bunch of life, but what are they going for? Let's drop the Ravenous. Let's see if that gets countered. It doesn't. Always yield. I discard Chainer's Edict. Okay, they can flash that back. Do I put down the Sinuous? My biggest concern is I don't have a backup finisher and I don't know when I'm going to draw one. I think I just have to pass. Dismal Backwater. They're up to 27. I'm surprised they didn't tap the Talisman. Pass it back to us. We'll swing in for one. Hey, we finally damaged them. I think we're winning. And then turn. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. They tap to gain. Radiant Fountain again. Another Pristine Talisman. I don't know if they're just kind of getting unlucky and only drawing their life gain cards and nothing else. Let's sign in Blood ourselves. See if that gets countered. So we get it. There's a Swamp. Play the Swamp. I'm gonna play the Burglar Rat. Alright, so they discard Devour Flesh. Swing in for one. And I'm going to play a bit risky. He's down to three cards in hand. He does have a Chainer's Edict. I have two other creatures to sacrifice. I'm going to play the Sinuous Vermin. We'll see what happens. Pass turn. Caps to gain. Because he has Evan Carr's Justice. Is that his win condition? That's probably his win condition right there. He can cast that every turn from now on. I do have Lab Rats. Now that I know he has that, I can play around it, but yeah, that sucks. I should have saved uh, my Sinuous Firm and then I can always draw again. Lab Rats with buyback. Pass turn. Another Pristine Talisman. I might want to save Ravenous, Ravenous Rats. If I can get it to where I have enough discard to make him discard the Evancar's Justice, I might they'll be able to win this. He's just not playing anything for me to interact with. I should just have him discard anyway. Counters that, that's fine by me. That prevents Lab Rats from getting countered. Swing in for one. Pass with buyback. See if he has a counter. He does not. Pass turn. Gain some life. Evan Carr's Justice again. I think at this point he has a lock on it. I'm tempted to scoop. It's not over yet. If I can get a Gurmag or I can get another Sinuous Vermin, then there's still hope. Lab Rats with buyback again. Pass turn. Heaven Cards Justice again. Pass back to us. Lab Rats with buyback. Heaven Cards Justice. And that's not what I need. I'm just going to scoop. It's too much. Going into the second game, discarding is definitely going to be really good. I did not see a single creature from this side, so I'm going to get rid of one tendrils. I'll get rid of both of these. I have Crypt Rats, and then I'll keep one copy of each. I'm going to bring in four. I'll bring in four Duresses. 
I'll take out two Typhoid Rats for the Nihil Spell Bombs for all... He seemed to have a few cards with Flashback. And it can help us draw a little deeper if we need it. I would love to go first, thank you. And not a single land. No. It says two. I can turn one Duress. I think I'll keep this. And... Oh man, I don't want to bottom any of this. I think I have to bottom the Sinuous? I'll bottom that. That's our finisher, so... Let's go ahead, Swamp, see what he has in hand. Think twice, Deep Analysis... He's got a lot of card draw in here. Let's get rid of the counter spell. Plays a Swamp, passes back. We'll play a Swamp. My biggest thing is he can go make us... I think I have to go ahead and Duress here. Get rid of that Chainer's Edict so I can start playing things. He got an Innocent Blood as well. Uh, that might change things a little bit. Now he has two Edict effects. Let's go with the Chainer's Edict. Pass turn. I wanted the Chainer's Edict just because he's going to be able to get at least one Edict, edict effect off. And I want it to make at least one of them super expensive. Plays on an Island, passes back to us. We'll play a Swamp. Let's read the Bones. Bottom Crypt Rats, Keep Burglar Rat, we get a Sign in Blood as well, pass turn. Cast Thing twice, plays another Island, passes back to us. Let's play the Swamp, Sign in Blood ourselves, see what we draw here. Probably gonna play the Burglar Rat, we get another Sign in, we are getting all of our card draw. Let's try to make him discard, always yield, what does he discard? Gets rid of the Devour Flesh, and pass turn. Radiant Fountain. Yep. What I thought. I'll discard that. Passes back to us. Trainer's Edict flashback costs seven, so we might be good to play the Skull Snatcher here. Let's sign and blood ourselves, see what we'll draw. We get Chittering Rats. I might want to play that. Because if a creature is going to stick, I want it to be Chittering Rats, because then we can ninjutsu it back to our hands. Flashes back, think twice. Better than Counterspell. Always yields. Pass turn. So if this sticks, we'll be... I, I'll feel pretty good. It does not stick. Sucks he drew into that. Uh, I guess we'll have to exile our graveyard. Passes back to us. I'm going to play Nikhil Spellbomb. Just to get that down on the board. And I think I might as well play Crypt Rats. It's not going to do anything, but it might be a creature I can ninjutsu. Because I want the exile effects from his graveyard. Pass turn. Deep Analysis. Near Aqueduct, we can bounce a land. Passes back to us. We draw a Swamp. Let's play that. And let's go ahead and swing. See what we can get in here. Doesn't block. We'll Ninjutsu. And we can get rid of the Edict and the Deep Analysis. Get rid of the Flashbacks. I might slow him down a little bit. And I think... In case he's got another Edict effect, I'll go ahead and play Crook Rats. Pass turn. Passes back to us. Very interesting. I'll play down the swamp. And I'll attack with everything. He cannot do anything, supposedly. The counter spell. I, I don't know if he has anything in his deck to get him back. And do I play the typhoid rats? I think... Let's stave off for now. I don't think there's really a reason to play it. It doesn't speed up my clock or anything. And if he has some removal, then it'd be nice to have something else in my hands. Dismal Backwater. Passes back. What does he not have? Go with Chittering. Let's keep him. If he doesn't have answers, let's keep him on not having answers. And the 2-2 body does some work. Okay, so he counters. But we do get a draw card. Hey, I'll take that. Okay, so we will get rid of our Skull Snatcher. We have another one. Nothing with flashback in his graveyard. The tragic slip. Green Fracture, I guess. I don't know. I don't think it matters too much. And I'll go ahead and put down the Typhoid Rats. Pass turn. Radiant Fountain. Passes back to us. We'll swing in for three. Exiling the last two cards in his graveyard. Let's make him discard. Or use a Counterspell. Whichever one. Let's it through. Okay. Discards a land. I'm not quite... Quite at the point. I think I'll play Crypt Rats next turn. Let's 
Crack and Heal Spell Bomb, I will pay one. I want to be able to draw a card. That's what I'm mainly going for, because I want to try to finish this game here. So with nothing else, passes it back to us. Oh, I like this. I like this a lot. We can get rid of his height. We, we can get rid of his hand here. Let's go ahead. Pittering Rats. Mystical Teachings. Exclude. Okay. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get rid of his entire hand, but we are going to be able to do a lot. Let's try to Ravenous here. It goes through, making him discard. Discards Radiant Fountain. Attack with everything we can. He takes it. We're going to get rid of Mystical Teachings and probably exclude. And so do we play Crypt Rats here? So next turn, I can swing in for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I play Crypt Rats, bring him down to 5. And then I'll have Swamps to kill him with Crypt Rats ability. So I think... I don't want him to draw anymore, so let's go all in. Pass turn. If he has Evan Carr's Justice, he might just win, but we can win next turn, and I think that's something we have to go for, especially since he can draw into Evan Carr's Justice. He passes back to us, so let's go ahead, swing in. He takes it, we'll exile the last card in his graveyard. Let's go ahead, let's do five. That'll kill him. Do we win? We got it, cool. All right, so we won, we won the second one. Why does no one finish? Why does everyone just quit? I don't get it. I am trying to get a full game for you people and no one wants to actually finish anything. <sighs> so our second game, we won the dice roll. We are going to go first, and I think we can keep this. If we don't hit another land, we can play Sign and Blood, hopefully draw another land. If we don't draw a land after that, we're doomed anyway, so let's just go for it. Swamp, pass turn. Dismal Backwater, pass back. Let's start the Hand Disruption with Ravenous Rats. Doom Blade. Doom Blade's not going to be very good against us at all. Let's pass. Vault of Whispers. Gainer's Edict, okay. Sinuous Vermin, we do not hit a Swamp. I'm gonna sign in Blood. Hopefully we're gonna hit a Swamp here so we can start playing our Chattering Rats. And we hit a Swamp, oh, thank goodness, okay. Pass turn. Why would he be playing Artifact Lands? There's Preordain, Ash Barons. We have Artifact Lands and Snow Cover Basics. What is this? What is going on? Let's play Chittering and pass turn. All right, so destroys Chittering and passes back. You have Gurmag. Let's Chittering again. Pass back. Do you think he hates us yet? On our end step, we sacrifice Chittering. Another blue-black control. He just passes back to us. Once again, we are against blue-black control. Why? Why is this so popular right now? Let's sign and blood ourselves, see if we can draw into another land here. We do. Uh, nothing else. Let's play a Skull Snatcher. Let's get more removal from him. He's got two cards in hand. Let's start, let's start getting things going, come on. Another removal spell, okay. So, let's go ahead. I'm going to play Typhoid Rats. He has two cards in hand, he has used so much- oh my god. I don't want to play Gurmag Angler. I very well could, but I don't want to right now. Let's just read the bones. Bottom, we do not want Tendrils. I'll take the Typhoid. Next turn, I'll play Typhoid. Can I play Swamp? All right, so there's a Swamp there. Next turn, I'm going to play Typhoid and Gurmag, and then after that, I can keep putting down Labrat creatures, so we'll see what happens after that. Think twice. He has one card in hand. What do you think it is? There's a Typhoid. We will cast the Gurmag, getting rid of Read the Bones. It really doesn't matter, we don't have anything. We're gonna counter that. That was really, that was his last card in hand, so let's... Let's play our other finisher, let's go. Flashes back, think twice. Preordain, he's gonna get something. Is it, boil is it Boiler Works? What is this guy's mana base? What is he running? So I have a choice here. Do I want to Monstrous Sinuous Vermin or do I want to play Burglar Rat? I think I'm going to play 
Burglar Rat. It protects more, ensures another creature against all of his Edict effects. Because he's going to be able to flashback Chainer's Edict next turn if he has something else. He lets it through, and we'll start swinging in. Pass the turn. We can flashback Chainer's Edict. Chooses not to. What What is the last card in his hand? I want to Monstrous Sinuous, so I'll forego the Read the Bones. And let's Monstrous. Hit him for 7, down to 11. Pass the turn. Oh boy, what is he going to grab? Mystical Teachings. I still don't understand the Is It Boiler works. What does he have? Is he trying to run Scred and Galvanic Blast, but that doesn't make any sense. What is this deck? It's all removal. I've yet to see anything to actually win the game. Is this another Evan Carr's Justice deck? Is this deck the new hot thing and I've just not run into it yet? Artificer's Epiphany. Pristine Talisman. This must be another... What is going on? I don't even understand what's going on anymore. Brainstorm. Okay. That's not bad because he can lock himself into some pretty bad draws. Passes back to us. We draw Swamp. Swing in with everything. Echoing Decay, the Burglar Rat. The rest goes through. He goes down to six. And one card in hand. Please don't be a counterspell. That goes through. Back to our hand. We'll pass turn. If he plays any blockers, we have Guest Verdict. Dismal Backwater. Chainer's Edict. I will sack the Rat Token. Back to my turn. And he's... And he concedes. Wait, he left. That was... Uh, okay, no one wants to play a full match. They just give up. Our next game, we lost the coin flip. Ooh, this one's tough. This one's tough. If I draw a third land, this is a really good hand. I think I'll keep it. I'm on the draw. I have a turn to play. I'm not helpless. Plays a swamp. You can get the third swamp. All right, we're not going to be punished. Okay, so white, black, pestilence, maybe? Play swamp and make him discard. Discards, diabolic edict. Oh my god, I've run into so many edict effects with this deck. White, black control, pestilence. Probably pestilence. It's chittering rats. Pass turn. Knight's whisper. Bajuka bog, that's... Fine. Must be running low on lands. And let's go ahead and swing in with Chittering. Now, do I want to read the bones or do I want to Chittering Rats? I think I want to get to Lab Rats. Let's Chittering Rats. It keeps the pressure on, uh, denies him another draw step. We can read the bones next turn if we don't hit a Swamp. If we hit a Swamp, then we have Lab Rats. Okay, so he plays the Pestilence. Passes back to us. So let's go ahead and read the bones because we did not hit a swamp well we hit the swamp and the sinuous vermin that'll be really good i want both of those i can play the swamp and let's just swing in and pass turn scoured barons guardian of the guild pack that's what i thought that is fine by me because we can just make him sacrifice and he scoops it up okay it's white black pestilence i definitely want i want the fourth guest verdict Corrupt Rats, I don't know. Probably some Duress, if I can make him discard. Definitely want the four Duresses. I'm going to get rid of one Tendrils of Corruption and four Typhoid Rats. Because they're 1-1s, one they're going to get completely wiped out by Pestilence anyway. And I think that's going to be good. I'm going to try that. I think that's fine. We have one land, but we do have Duress, but only one land, so there's no way I'm keeping this. More lands, no Duress, but I do have Burglar and Okiba. I think I'll try this. Do I just, do I bottom a Swamp? I think I do. I want all these creatures. Gower Barons, Swamp, pass turn. Circle of Protection, Black. Let's make him discard. Discards another Circle of Protection. Read the Bones. So let's go ahead, swing in. I'm gonna sign in blood. That was a misplay. I should have signed in. I should have done sign in blood before I swung. Thankfully, I'm not punished for it. But um, yeah, because if I got like a skull snatcher or something, that would have been a lot better. But that's it. I think I will pass turn. Oh, 
I, I don't know what he's gonna get rid of. Uh, probably Okiba. Gets rid of Okiba. Very sad. That was my turn. That was my play next turn. Uh, well. Basilica. Duress. Okay. Must have seen something else. The Sign in Blood? That's the only thing he can take. Back to me. I'll play a Swamp. Swing in for one. And I think I have to play the Sinuous. Pass turn. Coward Varens. Read the Bones. Passes back to me. I'll play a Swamp. And let's go ahead and swing in. I will Monster Sinuous. Circle of Protection Black. I will Monstrous. So it should take some damage. And pass turn. Pristine Talisman. He's not getting Pestilence. A second one. Let's make him discard. Discards a Castigate. Okay, that makes sense. Back with everything he can. He can activate that twice. There's the second. I have a second Crypt Rats. Let's play one Crypt Rats. Pass turn. There's the Pestilence. Uh, I will pay the one just to get a bit more damage off on him. He might have a lock here. Let's see if I can dig my way out of this. Yeah, that's not what I needed. I think he's got the lock. Unfortunately, that was pretty unlucky. I don't really like Crypt Rats. It doesn't do all that much, but I don't know what I would bring in. Get rid of one Crypt Rat, I'll bring in a Skull Snatcher, and I think that's pretty much all I can do. Hopefully, I'll get a Duress or something to slow him down. I would like to play first. Thank you. Oh, three Duresses. <laughs> all right. I'll take that. Yeah, that is great. Oh, this is going to be horrible. This is going to be horrible. This is going to be great. Turn one, Duress. He has a Read the Bones. Oh, man. That is not a good hand for him. Pass turn. All he has in hand are lands. Goward Barons. Make him discard a land. Discards a Bajuka Bog. I don't think he had Bajuka Bog. Oh yeah, he did. So he has one new card in there. So next turn we can swing into the Burglar Rat, ninja to it back to our hand, and make him discard again. We'll bring Burglar Burglar Rat back to our hand. Ninjutsu. Get rid of these two. And there it goes, Burglar Rat. Gets rid of the swamp. Fast turn. If you're a crossroads, gains two life. Gainer's Edict, okay. Uh, I will get rid of Burglar Rat, I guess. I've got another one. Got two cards in hand. This card's a Radiant Fountain. Swing in for two. Get rid of Chainer's Edict and that Radiant Fountain. And one card in hand. I'm waiting to use Duress for when he, uh, when he plays a card draw spell. Okiba. Oh, I don't have a fourth land. That'd be so good if I had a fourth land. Oh, well. We're going to make him discard that card. So we ninjutsu. And he's down to 16. And no cards in hand. Oh, we made him get rid of the Pestilence. Nice. Nice. That is exactly what we want. We'll duress after this. Uh, if we draw a Swamp, though, we're gonna Ninjutsu in and make him discard both of them. <laughs> ninjutsu this and make him discard two. Oh man, this is, this is nasty. This is mean. I love it. Guardian of the Guild Pact and Read the Bones. We'll pass turn. This is... Yes. Um, how could he beat that? That was lucky. That was very, very lucky. Oh man, I am so... That last match was disgusting. Oh, that, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That was the best this deck has ever worked. Granted, it was a very lucky, very lucky match for a game. He had a mold down to five, and we got rid of the card draw in his hand with the duress, and then we just kept... We, we got great draws, kept on the pressure of the discarding, but that's what this deck wants to do. That was, that was the game plan right there. The deck does have weaknesses as far as facing constant sweepers or answers, Again, especially against the Pestilence. If he gets Pestilence out, there's almost nothing we can do about it. So it, we really just want to keep on the pressure for discarding because that's how we're going to beat most people or get around most answers that can deal with our deck. I like rats in real life. I think they're pretty cool. They're nice, intelligent creatures, I guess. <laughs> Make great pets and 
they're pretty cool and i wanted to build a rat tribal deck after especially after seeing all the discarding that ravenous and burglar rats can provide seeing the ninjas was really cool but when i looked it was pretty much all just around relentless rats and rat colonies and that's not cool this deck is very cheap and as you can see it works pretty well it costs like three ticks 2.5 ticks on online and 15 dollars in real life you can get this much cheaper just by browsing the five cent commons bin at your local game store if you if they have a really good paper collection this deck is dirt cheap and it works fairly well if you want a deck that not a lot of uh, not a lot of people are going to be running this could be a really good deck i feel like there are optimizations to be made but i feel like this is a pretty solid list as far as upgrades i would recommend i mean you're, you're working with rat tribal there's not exactly a lot of other pure upgrades you could do I feel like, honestly, this is just a weaker version of Mono Black Control. If you want a stronger deck than this, just build Mono Black Control. A lot of the pieces are here for it. You can build it, but if you're looking for something fun, it's something that's cheap, very cheap. This is a great deck to get started in the Popper metagame, although maybe not in real life. I don't know. If you feel like making friends, then maybe not this one, although it could be cool. It could be cool with all the rats. I really like this deck. It's a lot of fun. Very cool. Travel rats. No relentless rats, no rat colony. Who knew? Who knew it could work? I did. That's why I built it. I knew. But hopefully you have seen the power of this deck. Definitely not tier one, but I think a solid tier two, maybe. Especially after the last match. Oh, that I can't get over it. That was it was so cool. Alright. Whew. Okay, I need to calm down after the last one. Thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. I have a lot of fun making these, and I really appreciate each and every view that I get. If you have any more ideas for popper builds, especially budget, I don't have a lot of money right now, so it's going to have to be budget. But if you have any more ideas or optimizations that you would do for this deck, feel free to tell me down below. I want I want to see them. I want to read them. I like I love interacting with you guys. Looking forward to doing more videos like this, more Popper. I love Popper. It's a great format, especially with the Astrolabe ban. I think Popper is in a great spot right now. Perfect for getting into. But now, if you'll excuse me, I'm about to kill my opponent and make him discard every card in his hand. Bye.